Good evening and welcome to the book launch by the well-known local artist in Penzance, Peter Fox. The book, Peter Fox Artists, has been published by Footsteps Press and is the amalgamation of many, many years of work, both in the community and as a thinker, and as someone who is passionate about nature. Peter, one of the questions that's most on my mind is when did you decide, when did you feel that you wanted to be an artist? Um, well, my brother was a painter, and he went to Northampton Art School, and he was painting at home all the time as well at weekends, and uh, I thought, oh, I want to do that as well. <laughs> Does he so, paint like you? No. He painted quite in a, quite a traditional manner, like topographical, landscape, uh, ships, uh, people, that sort of thing. And so did you But start... I learned a lot of good technique from him, actually. He was very clever. And, so I just did learn a bit from him. By looking, or did he actually teach you? Just looking, yeah, and watching, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so your style, did it start like his? No. 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 Although I can remember doing a ship because he had done a ship. <laughs> but um, no, my style started when I went to art college, really. Um, yeah. Although I was painting flowers, I remember. when I was Before I went to art college, I did paint some flowers. Yeah. Started when I went to art school, really, and discovered underfaster. <laughs> okay, right. That really grabbed you. It did. And not only it? because he's a great artist, but because he's a conservationist as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've always been a lover of nature. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So what part of the country did you come from? Northamptonshire. Okay. She's very spoiled now, actually, and it upsets me when I go back there because it's very spoiled. Intensely farming. I always spell nature with a capital N, so I think it's so important. So you had a rural upbringing? Uh, sort of, yeah. It was a lot of housing estate, which wasn't far from the countryside. And I, I, it's only a hundred yards away, basically, the countryside. And I remember running about in the woods like crazy. Yeah, yeah looking for birds' nests, which is I regret now, of course, but <laughs> that's the sort of thing people did then. No one told me it was wrong. That's, by the way, that's called shrinking baseline syndrome. When you accept what's gone before. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. I regret that now, but uh, I, um, <coughs> yeah. I can empathise. When I was nine and ten, the boys that I went to school with would see an earthworm and they would stand on it. Oh yeah. And so I did the same. Yeah. Until our geography master told us when I was about ten and a half, eleven, that Darwin had written a whole monograph on the brilliance and necessity, ne necessary life of the earthworm, yeah. and how without them, we had no farming. That's changed, right. A change, Absolutely. completely changed. Now yeah. I pick them up, I have them ever since I was 11. I've been to Dal Darwin's house, and I saw where he did the, uh, the meter square, where he studied the worms. <laughs> yeah. it's, fa it's fascinating. Yeah. It's all yeah. about, you're right, it's all about influence. Yes. So at art school, mm -hmm. you saw this painter, you changed, you, you, you realised this is where you wanted to go. Well, I realised you didn't have to paint in, a, in an academic way. Mm. You could just do what you wanted. Because yeah. <laughs> he does, you know, he just does, does what he wants. And that's the result. I thought, well, that's fantastic. So, so what you wanted to do, I and mean, what you described, I and mean, what's in your book, uh, is a great, intense passion for nature. Yeah. A really thought out intellectual argument against how human beings deal with nature mm. and the way in which we historically, again, mm. we've created societies from people who didn't have any science. It started 5,000 years ago. So we've sort of inherited mistakes yeah. and we now That's consider them based to be, on syndrome, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We now yeah. consider them to be yeah. the way things are done. Yeah. Mm. When did you come down to Cornwall? Um, I went to the Falmouth School of Art in 1980, uh, left in 82, yeah, 79 to 82, yeah, so I decided to stay here. Mm. So it really grabbed you? Definitely, yeah. yeah. I lived in some nice places with, with woods and trees, so yeah. Yeah, that was good. And what brought you to Penzance? Um, oh, good question, yeah, I've been moving around. I, went to, I was in St. Ives for a while, um, had a studio there. Um, didn't get on particularly well there um, because I was a picture framer at the time and had to spend a lot of time paying for the studio, so I couldn't concentrate on art all the time. 
Um, but then I found a cottage just inland from Arizona. And I've been there 30 years now. And uh, I planted trees when I got there. And now it's a wonderful woodland. Mm, yeah. It's incredible what you can do with trees. Yeah. So you, you love trees more than flowers? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have a great garden as such? No. I don't, I don't do anything conventionally. I just let it go. Yes. You know, it's yeah. called inspired neglect. Yes, yes, absolutely <laughs> understood. Yeah. Yeah. And do you find that what you have created inspires your work? In a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah in a way. Because yeah. obviously what you created was inspired by your response to nature. It's mostly, though, being upset about what's happening elsewhere, really. Um, intensive farming, how things have changed over the last 50,000 years. You know, mm. We've been at it, and humans have been spreading around the world, killing stuff. Mm. And that upsets me. And I think we should do a lot more you know, to put it back and repair the damage. So this, I mean, obviously your art, therefore, is, is inspired by quite a political philosophy. Do you get involved in, in politics? Mm. Well, green, green politics. So community-based, very? Uh, well, we do that here at Red Wing. We have uh, meetings, you know, Friends of the Earth meetings. And, uh, well, well you mentioned Red Wing, so let's talk about when you created yeah. Red, Red Wing. Ten years, years ago, wasn't it, was it? <laughs> Eleven. Crocky. Eleven years, Eleven years ago. Yeah. And the idea was Well, that because I wasn't getting into galleries, because I don't do the Cornish thing. I just do not do the Cornish thing. I don't do... I mean, that red painting over there was rejected because it, it was red. And they, um, they were looking for blue paintings. You know? <laughs> so, um, I just never fitted in very oh. well. I, and I'm not very good at approaching galleries because I'm dyslexic. And I'm not a really good, very good people person, really. Um, I'm not an intellectual either, really. And so and that's why I like visual things, because I find it easier to express myself in visual terms. Well, I would, I would take a step back from that, and I would say a visual argument is as strong as a literary argument. Mm -hmm. You think in a different way. When I started, first met Derek Guthrie, he, I was reading, and he said, painting is another way of thinking. Yeah. And that really, I'd never thought of that at all, mm -hmm. because I'm not a painter. So that opened up the whole of the art, the history yeah. of art for me, to say, I have to understand mm -hmm. this. So, and if you're thinking, you're being intellectual. Yeah. So, you know, when you've got a brush in your hand, you're as intellectual as someone with a pen. Mm. So, uh, that I would su suggest. Mm. So you've got Red Wings, you, you've established it because you weren't getting into galleries, but it's become very popular with groups of people in Penzance. Yeah. It's a place where people come. You put on events here? All sorts of events, yeah. Uh, not only visual, but musical as well, yeah. And, uh, sorts of events, yeah. Do you ever teach Workshop, art? Yeah. Workshops. I'm planning a printmaking workshop in August. It's oh, very good. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, we do workshops of all kinds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have a space upstairs for people uh, who just come and hang. Where anybody can show their work upstairs, yeah. We, that's very important about, an important part of what we do is it's available for anybody to use. Yeah. Very important. So I think part of this video we will put the contact details of Red Wing oh, yeah? underneath because people will want to know about this. Mm -hmm. In the whole of Cornwall, not just Penzance. Yeah. I mean, no refusé at all at that. No refusé. <laughs> I mean, that is very enlightened mm -hmm. because you're quite right. Getting into galleries is quite a sophisticated business. Yeah, I always find it difficult. Always. always find it difficult. Well, if you don't, if you're not mainstream, you're going to. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Really. Uh, mm -hmm. What would change is if a critic came here and started to extol your work in The Spectator or something like that, mm. and the gallery locally would take interest. And now I have the, kind of the opposite problem, because the top galleries know that I have this gallery, so this is kind of competition for them, and they won't show me for that reason now. So you just can't win. <laughs> well, they yeah. might be looking for excuses, you know. So what do you have, what are, what are your major plans? You're printmaking in August, what's your next plans for um, what happens here? What are the workshops we've got coming up, Rosalind? I don't know. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> well, you're doing lots of music, aren't you? Doing lots of music, yeah. That's right. yeah. Of course, you love uh, Cuba, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I drum because I like the... Um, what's the word? The P word. Mm. Percussion. Percussion. It's also primal. 
very primal to play drums. And it's almost like I want to be a, an ethnic person again. And, you know, uh, mm. okay. and like a, a person that was born in this country and reg regard myself as um, a, what's the word? Sort of like a native. A native, yes. Native, yeah. yeah. So, but a native British person. Like yeah. Going back to the Druids, mm. going back further to the yeah. Druids, right, okay. Because I think that's such an important part of our culture, you know, our folklore and where we come from and who we were. Um, that's all being lost, isn't it, in a way, you know, with capitalism and all the rest of it. And, mm. I think it's very difficult to know where you've come from. Mm. I think I think the whole research into DNA in the last fifty years has been an eye opener. That's amazing. Absolutely, yeah, everything. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. And what we have only found mm. out, we're all cousins. Yeah. There, there are no foreigners. That's right. Yeah. The, the foreign, yeah. foreign yeah. is just a creation of nation building. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So this is, mm. it's going to change society. But again, you come back to influence. Where's the teaching? How is it coming through the schools? Mm. And how are children being influenced by it? Mm. But again, it's, have you found, like I know many artists who are not mainstream, that art has been the saving grace of your life, that it's where you go for your safety? Definitely, definitely. It's, I wouldn't know what I would have done if it wasn't for art. Yeah. Because I can't stop. I worked in factories and I hated it. Hated it. And uh, I couldn't work in an office. Uh, I don't know what I would do. Well, it's lovely being talking to you. Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Okay.